Sir, new file po sa akin. New file. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Yes, How about sir. the others? Okay, for the others, so from Sherry, she's saying that it was a data that you, we were working on last time. For Rain, <clears throat> same thing. Uh, it, it was a data that we were, it was the file that we were working on last time. How about the others? In trial, no? Because the trial is the one we were working on last time. <clears throat> okay, attendance, mamaya na lang after, after class. Okay, attendance, mamaya. So how about the others? So some of you said that when you open your R Studio, it's an empty file. For the others, you were saying you're saying that uh, you opened to a file that we were working on last time. So why is it different? <clears throat> so new file, empty file, etc. Okay, now why is it different, class? Why is it that for some of you, when you open your R R Studio here? you were led to a new file, but for the others, you were led to the uh, previous file that we were using. So let me illustrate that, let me explain, and uh, and uh, hopefully you're, you're aware of this so that you know how you are going to uh, set your RStudio. It really depends on how you want your RStudio to open. So when I click this, <clears throat> okay, Try to observe what happens when I open my R Studio. Okay. Now you notice that it opened to a <clears throat> new file. In fact, there are only three window panes here. And we know that there should be four. <clears throat> but don't not to worry because you can easily just click this one and show all pins, and then it will show you the four four pins. But you notice that this this one class opened to a, uh, a white screen because I said this yesterday during our class. Uh, we were in the classroom <clears throat> and we could hardly see the the uh, <clears throat> cobalt setting, so that's why I had to convert it into into white. Okay, so it opened to <clears throat> this uh, this interface here, and it's a new file. Okay, it's a new file. While in in your case, for some of you at least, you opened to the previous file that you were working on. Now, <clears throat> why is that so? Okay, because uh, depending on how your your R Studio is uh, is set. Uh, let me show that. So you go to tools and then global options. Sir, excuse <laughs> me, sir. Yes. Sir, you're, you're not sharing your screen. Oh, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Wait, huh? And am I recording? Yeah, I'm recording, but okay, I think when I lost power a while ago, when I got disconnected. <clears throat> now, okay, am I sharing my screen now? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Bob. Let me uh, cancel this first. <clears throat> As I said, when I open my screen, my R Studio. Uh, excuse me, class. I'm sorry, I just cleared my throat. It opened to a new, uh, new instance of R. Okay, so this is an a new file. Okay, but in your case, in the other's case, you open to the uh, <clears throat> previous file, right? Previous file you were working on. Now, why is that? Because as I said, it has something to do with your settings. So you go to tools, global options, and then here, here, R general. Now, in my case, okay, for those of you who opened to, uh, when you opened, it was, it opened to your previous file. What do you notice about this one? Restore most recently opened project at startup. Comment please for those of you when you open your R, it opened the previous file. <clears throat> okay, naka check. Thank you, Rain. Naka check. It's uh, it's clicked here. 
Okay. Now, in my case, it's not clicked. Restore previously open source documents at startup. Now, why is this so? Why is this so? Now, it's just a personal preference that when I when I open my R Studio, I want a fresh. I want I want a new file. Okay. Now, uh, is it better? No, not necessarily. Because, for example, if you're working on a particular project, and uh, <clears throat> and you want that those files to open automatically when you open R Studio, then it's best to have this checked. Okay, the default is this is checked, but I <clears throat> I uncheck this. Okay, so that when I open my R R Studio, it will it will open to a new file. Okay, now I have reasons for that. Uh, which I'm going to uh, share. With, uh, well, I actually have uh, have intimated to you why. Okay, uh, apologies once again. It keeps on disengaging. <clears throat> so let me share screen again. <clears throat> okay, and let me check if I'm still recording. Okay, I'm still recording. <clears throat> okay, very sorry, class. So <clears throat> as I said, uh, I would set my default to uncheck this okay but in our in your case you may you may still continue <coughs> uh, clicking clicking this now is it possible that when I open even if this is unclicked okay this is not not checked can I still open the file I'm working on when I <coughs> when I open R yes of course you can do that so let's go to that discussion okay so if you want to to uh to unclick this, it's up to you. If we want to maintain <clears throat> this being checked, then it's okay, no problem. It's your personal preference. Okay, now let's go first to the discussion of projects. I mentioned this to you last time, but it's important that when when you're working on a particular file, you're let's say working on an RMD file or an R script file or a QMD file, <clears throat> it's all it's important that you work uh efficiently by making use of our projects <clears throat> okay so how do i construct how do i open an r project okay uh the reason why you you would want to use an r project is because it's very efficient as far as organizing your files is concerned okay so to do that uh, we can do it several ways first you go here to file file and the new project okay file new project or you can go here you can see here the icon the plus and then this is the cube here the r cube here is the logo for our project okay so i can click this and <clears throat> okay <clears throat> here we have our <clears throat> new, new directory <clears throat> so where do you want to create your project I would want to create it either in in an existing directory or a new directory. Maybe in your case, since you haven't created a, a you haven't identified the directory. So let's do this. We can create a new directory where you're going to uh, where you're going to save your R project. So let's click this. Okay, and then <clears throat> here our uh, new project. <clears throat> I'm going to click this and there. So what do you want uh, the directory name to be? Okay. okay. In my case, I'm going to make it <clears throat> the name of the subject. So I'll write here, fin lits okay, K32. I'll put here term two, AY 2023 to 24. So it's just to for me to identify that it's uh, subject finlich and it's on the second term. Of course, you may wish to uh, you may wish to rename it your, uh, your own way. You can just name it finlich K thirty two. Okay, so you're now asked to <clears throat> create the subject, <clears throat> the project as a subdirectory of. Uh, in what directory do you want to? put your, your R project, okay? So you can browse, you may wish to put it in the desktop. Okay, so what I did was, <clears throat> I have already designated a, 
<clears throat> a uh, location. If in my case, it's in my desktop, and in my desktop there's a folder there, zero point nine DFM su subjects. So I want to put it there. Okay. So it's up to you really where you want to put your your project. Okay, you can browse. You can create a folder wherever you want to uh, wherever you want to put your project. Okay, so once you, once you have identified the folder, uh, the file location of your R project, you can now click this, open a new session, okay, and then, okay, before before I do this, okay, before I do this, before I create object, notice that when I open my R Studio, you have here on the upper left R Studio, and then here. R project <clears throat> none, which means that when I open my uh, R Studio, it it's not contained. This is not found in a project. Okay. All right. When I now check check this, click this, create project. <clears throat> okay. Let's observe what happens. Okay, you can now see. Okay, what do you notice happened, class? <clears throat> Any comments about what happened? Okay, sir, may bagong R project file po sa files. Okay, correct, no? My bagong R project sa files. And also take note class on the upper left, you can see now the name of the project. <clears throat> it's Finlitz K32T2 in my case, okay? And also it's also named here in the console. <clears throat> if you click this class, this drop down. <clears throat> in my case, I, I have here, because I already created several projects, I have here uh, the names of the several projects that I created, which I can access, okay? In your case, you might just have one, one so far. Okay, let me check first. There's a. Okay, thank you, Eliza. It opened a new tab for our studio. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. So, also let's take a look at the interface here. You notice now that in the files plots packages uh, window, <clears throat> you now have this one. Finlitz K32 T2 AY R project. That's now the name of the project. <clears throat> and every time you're going to put a file in that folder, okay, you will, <clears throat> uh, you will, uh, uh, the files here will be updated. Okay, why don't we go to the uh, folder where you saved your project? So in my case, it's here. Finlitz K32 here. So if I open this class, if I open this, there is my R project, okay, there. And later on, I can create, I can create uh, <clears throat> several subfolders here. In fact, the file that you, that you uh, used last time, okay, the file that you used last time, you can load it here. Okay, I didn't save it, so I can't show it. But <clears throat> for those of you who saved the trial one, you can load it here. You can, in fact, create a new folder here, subdirectory, new folder. And you can name this R, the R introduction, R and R studio intro. You can put the file here. Okay. You can put the RMD file here, the one that you saved last time. And it will be part of the project. Okay, and then let's try. Let's try to do this <clears throat> new. <clears throat> you can put here uh, time series <clears throat> intro. <clears throat> let's say intro to time series because that will be our first lesson. Quickly, long, a very quick introduction to time series, and then <clears throat> we go to the applications of it, like portfolio optimization, etc. So, what happened, class? What happened? 
I have this uh, folder, FinLips K32, and I opened this one, Intro R and R Studio Intro, Intro to Time Series. <clears throat> okay, plus this is the R project uh, file. Okay, if I go back to the R Studio that we uh, I opened, note here, you can see, now see here that there's a folder R and R Studio Intro. Okay, because I opened that in the directory. And this also introduction to time series. Okay, so let me pause for a while. Okay, I, if I click this, there's nothing here, class, because I didn't save any file there. But if you save there the, the trial file that we were working on last time, you will find it here. And you can easily access it. Okay. Uh, here. Okay. Let me pause for a while. Are there any questions, class? So this is a very efficient way of of uh, <clears throat> of organizing your files in R in R Studio. Okay. Any questions so far? May I have your feedback if uh, if it's clear so far, class? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gab. How about the others? Okay, good, thank you. So one. <clears throat> so far I have had, <clears throat> I have eight responses, no? So that's, that's not even 30%. How about the others? <clears throat> okay, thank you. There. Thank you, class. I appreciate you. <clears throat> I appreciate your feedback. It matters a lot to me, class. Okay, so don't, <clears throat> please, I would uh, appreciate you giving feedback when asked to do so. All right, good. Thank you. I think that's more than 50%, but next time I hope to get 90% and above <clears throat> as far as uh, feedback is concerned. Okay, so we have learned how to create a, an R Studio. Uh, I mean, a project, our project in R Studio. Now, uh, we learned last time that we can, when you open R Studio, you can create an R Markdown file, uh, an R script. So may I ask you, class, what's the difference between, let's open first an R Markdown. Here. So uh, before we open an R markdown, what type of document is this? Okay, and <clears throat> by the way, let me change the appearance. I'll set it back to Cobalt <clears throat> for better viewing as far as you're concerned. <clears throat> there. Okay. <clears throat> okay, here class. Is this an R script? document or an R markdown document? R script? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why so? Gab, why so? Sir, walang code chunks po. Okay, thank you. Uh, walang YAML, walang code chunks. No? Okay, pwede rin naman walang code chunk, no? pero uh, wala siyang YAML. No? You, you remember yung YAML class? Okay, thank you, Rain Ann. Uh, when you answer class, I would appreciate you uh, directing your answer to everyone para makita so that others will see your answer. <clears throat> uh, remember class, so let's now open an R markdown. All right, here, this one, R markdown. And I'll just, uh, and then we, we discussed last time that <clears throat> it's best to Click this rather than hard coding your code here. Okay. Okay. There. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I think it's the <clears throat> the font is very big. Let me just adjust it a bit. Eighteen. Okay, better. 
<clears throat> All right. So we learned last time that there's a difference between your R markdown and an R script. <clears throat> and we said that uh, it's really better to work with an R markdown file versus an R script. R markdown is more flexible. It's uh, more user friendly. It's uh, uh, there are many things in particular when you when you <clears throat> print knit or render your your data. If you can see here in your here class, no, in your R script. Okay, you cannot see a rendering here, <clears throat> knitting here, but in R markdown. Okay, you can see that you can knit in this case. Now, may I ask you, class, if we discussed how to <clears throat> knitting last time? Did you did we make use of this? Knit knit the documents. Did we class? Yes or no, please. Hello, class. <clears throat> Did we need the document, the RMD file that we generated last time? <clears throat> ah, not yet. Okay, see here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> now you can see the difference between R, R script, and R markdown. In in particular, when we need the file. So what's needing the file? Okay, needing the file is printing the file. Okay, let's, uh, before we need the file, let's just continue looking at this. So we learned that this is the YAML, okay? This is the YAML. And so what's the difference between your R script and your R markdown? Here you can write text. In your R script, if I type YAML here. Okay, sorry. It generates an error. No? Okay, let, let, let me use another word. Let's say uh, RStudio. Okay. I know it's used as a function. <clears throat> okay, morning. Okay, whatever word. Okay, what happened, class? It says here that's their error. Okay. Error in file. Okay, there's no <clears throat> history. Uh, that it's a function class, so I'll not use that. Uh, comment. It's also a function, so I have to be careful with <clears throat> with some comment. Okay, okay, comment. All right. So here, error. Okay, it does not understand this word. So you can just put any text in our studio, our, our script. If you want to put a text, then you have to put it in hashtag there. And no? It accepted your input here. It did not generate an error term. But of course, it did not do anything because this is just a comment. <clears throat> so whether it's in our script or our, our markdown, if you want to put a comment, you use a hashtag. It doesn't matter if it's two, okay? Because R will just consider the first one and there. <clears throat> so it did it did not make any error error output. It just read this as a comment, okay? Because of the hashtag here. So it will not <clears throat> uh, run anything here. Uh, in, in the case of R markdown, if I type YAML here, control enter. Okay, what happened? Ah, it's uh, really class, huh? It was uh, reading it with the YAML. Okay, let me put it here. Ah, okay. So, wait.
All right. So I was able to put the text here, intro to our markdown. Okay. And there's no error. Okay. Because it will accept uh, text written in our markdown. So that's one difference between our script and our markdown. So let me just delete this. So if you notice, class, the, the uh, default, the sample R markdown file, uh, this is a text, right? This is a text. And you can write a text in R markdown, unlike in R script. Okay. <clears throat> you can only write text in R script if you put it in uh, as a comment. So you have to put <clears throat> uh, a hashtag there. All right. So uh, may I know if we discussed the code chunk last time, class? This one? <clears throat> Candy yes. chunk? Okay, we did. <clears throat> okay, did we, class? Okay, all right. So just a quick review, class. Now, did we did we discuss what is this for? This word cards there. Did we discuss that, class? What is the purpose of this? Okay. Will it run even without cars? Okay, let me run this summary cars. So I think last time we discussed that <clears throat> cars is a data file that comes prepackaged with R. <clears throat> and summary is a function that will give us the statistic, the descriptive statistic summary, like minimum value, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, the maximum value, and the mean, the average. So that's the function summary. Okay. Uh, again, what's cars class? R will understand that because this object is uh, it's reserved for that uh, file, for that uh, file consisting of two variables, speed and distance. Okay, back to my question. Will this run even if, okay, let me close this. Will this run even if uh, the word cars was not placed there? <clears throat> Will it, Gus? Can you try? <clears throat> Did it run? Yes, sir. Okay, it ran. So does that mean that the word cars there does not have any utility at all? So if it will run, why, why do we have to put cars there? What do you think is the reason, class? What's the purpose of that? All right, please notice, no? I'm here. I'm here in this code chunk. <clears throat> okay, observe something below class observe uh, observe something below if you type any word for example word something is happening below class what is that okay let me try let me do it again <clears throat> repeat something was being changed below I can write here a phrase. What happens below? Sir? Yes? Sir. Uh, yung name ng chunk. Yun, okay. Uh, sino yun? Uh, who, sorry, who was that? Um, Gab, okay. Thank, yeah, thank you, Gab. You're correct, no? Okay, sabi ni Gab, look here below class. If I go here, I'm actually... Here, it will tell you the index. Uh, what, what's the uh, chunk that you're working on? Okay, it tells us, us that this is chunk two. Is that chunk two? Yes, because this is chunk one. If I go here, yeah, this is chunk one. This is the first code chunk. And then I go here. This is the second code chunk. Notice this one, class. If you're in a particular code chunk, it identifies <clears throat> the position of that code chunk relative to the whole document. So this is chunk two. And what's happening, class? Notice when I'm erasing <clears throat> what I the text that I wrote there, <clears throat> it automatically adjusts here. 
So let me write back here, cars. Okay, so this is used as an identifier. Uh, so what's the use of this? Well, if you're working on an R markdown file and there are so many code chunks that you have generated, you have created, it pays to give it a name, okay? It pays to give it a name, a meaningful name so that later on, when you're navigating through your RMD file and there are so many code chunks there, it will be easy for you to determine where or find out where. Imagine class if you had 1,000 code chunks and if you'll just <clears throat> scroll down to look for that particular code chunk, okay, that will be really, really very difficult to do. Unlike if you give it a name. So if I click this here, here, notice class that there are three code chunks in our file. Code chunk one, and the name of the first one is set up. Then you have here chunk two. So this is after this particular outline, this header. And then in the third header, including plots, you have this chunk three. So if I click this, automatically it will bring us to the third <clears throat> code chunk. So this is a very, very, uh, <clears throat> let's say, uh, powerful way <clears throat> for you to navigate through the RMD. It's a very useful tool. So that's why, class, it's a good practice always to, uh, it's a good practice to name your code chunk appropriately or properly. Okay, it's not good to name it, for example, chunk three, and then the name is chunk three. What's the purpose? You, have, you already have this generic name, chunk three. <clears throat> so name it accordingly. All right, so that's uh, another thing that I want, want to point out. Okay, <clears throat> now how about this class? This one are, the name of the code chunk is pressure, you can see here, okay? And uh, I think we ran this last time, right? Am I right, class? Can you please uh, confirm if we run this code, code chunk last time? Did we? Okay, good. Thank you, Julian. Confirmed by your class that we run this. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let me rerun this. <clears throat> okay, and what do you see? You see here that the plots, aside from being, it will be generated here. Okay, kaso, mali itong space dito, no? So, hindi niya generate. So, let me once again run this. Kaya. Dapat mag -error siya dito, ano? Third time. Supposed to run here in the plots. Hmm, bakit kaya? Hmm. For some reason, it does not it does not run here. If I run this one, ayan, no? So, oftentimes, class, I'm not. I'm not sure why it did not run this time. When you run a the plot function here in the console in the source window, it's supposed to run here in the plot section also. Okay, it only run when I run it in the console. Okay, when I run it here, then it run here. Okay, I'm I'm not sure why. It was not running when I was running it in the uh, source window. Okay, anyway, so you notice here also, aside from the name of the code chunk, you have your pressure and then comma, then you have here another instruction, echo is equal to false. So what's the meaning of echo is equal to false? There's a note here, note that echo is equal to false parameter was added to the code chunk to prevent printing of the R code that generated, oh wait, prevent the printing of the R code that generated the plot. Okay, let me make this echo is equal to true. So let's run this. Okay, there, mm -hmm. another one. Okay, ayo pa rin dito, no? Ayo pa rin. Okay, so the context class is that echo is equal to false 
means that when you print this sa printing, no? yung rendering or yung knitting dito, pag na echo is equal to false, hindi ipiprint yung yung res result ng code na to. Okay? But, so the question is, you you put, okay, echo is equal to false, you put this class, if you don't want whatever the result of the code here to be printed. Okay? But if you want it printed, it's okay either to type echo is equal to true or, Hello, sir. yes, uh, sir, akala ko po, ano, ano? If you put echo false, mm -mm. magkikita lang yung parang yung result ng code per as yung code. Hindi siya ipapakita sa printing. Yung code? Yung parameter was added to, to prevent printing of... Ah, okay. Sorry, sorry. Ah, uh, Yung code mismo, no? pero lalabas yung ano. Yeah, thank you, thank you for... Yung result, yes. Yeah, oo. Oh, oh, oh. Sa salamat, ha? sorry. I got confused there, no? So, it's the R code. No that... Yeah, thank you. It's the uh, R code, no? Uh, sorry, nakalimutan ko na tong echo is equal to false. Uh, because usually, I don't I don't use echo is equal to false, no? Kasi when I print, when I render, I would normally want the code to be printed. Yeah, you're correct, no? Uh, I stand corrected there. So, yung echo is equal to false dito, it's the R code. Okay? <clears throat> R code that generated the plot. We will show this now. We will render it so that we can see. So, let's start first with echo is equal to true, which is the default. So, when you type echo is equal to true, okay? Echo is equal to true or pwede rin naman class na wag natin ilalagay yan. So, when you don't write it there, when you, when you write when you when you don't write that automatically class ang default niyan echo is equal to true which means the code the r code will be printed okay pag linagay natin dito echo is equal to false then that's the time when the code will not be echo equal equals false or echo is equal to f uh, if you have watched the video sa unit 1 alam niyo na pwedeng capital f or false no <clears throat> All right. So let's do this class. So let's use echo is equal echo is equal to true capital T, and then let's render this. Okay. So tignan natin class. Ito wala tayong ilalagay yah. Dito. Echo ibig sabi nito echo is equal to true class. Ibig sabi n default yon, which means it will print this ano. It will print this R code. Okay, so again, now how do we render? Okay, and by the way, class, I'm not sure if uh, I discussed this already with you last time. Notice yung sa outline, ano? Bakit may dalawa dito, class? R markdown and including plots. So before we render, why do we have two, two items here sa so R markdown? I'm not sure if I discussed this with you last time, class. Okay, yung dalawang uh, hashtag. Okay, uh, Francis, did I discuss this with you last time? Um, Sir, I don't recall. Pa. Okay, so hindi pa. Okay, thank you. Now, <clears throat> our markdown and including plots here. If you click this class, it will bring you to this one. Notice, may dalawang hashtag dito. <clears throat> so be very careful in the use of hashtag because they hashtags are used <clears throat> as in the outlining. <clears throat> headers to, no? These are used as headers. For example, if I use one hashtag and then I write here intro, <clears throat> introduction. Notice class, while I'm writing here, nag update siya dito, di ba? Introduction <clears throat> to R markdown. Yan. And here, sinulat na dito. <coughs> Tapos, class, ito. <coughs> Dalawa. And then, let me, let me experiment. Magtatlo tayo, class. Tatlo. Okay. <coughs> and I'll write uh, text. Text one na lang. Okay. Notice, class, 
text one is is under our markdown. <clears throat> so this is used for outlining. This is used for uh, your headers. So this is this number one is just like your let's say Roman numeral number one, and then this is a this is a <clears throat> a point one for example, and then if I write here another hashtag, some hashtag, then uh, let's say outline uh, header mm, topic, let's say topic two. So this is topic one, for example. Okay, notice class. Tinan yung pag-outline niya. Diba? So topic one, you have introduction to our markdown. And then two hashtags here are marked down. And three hashtags, you have text one. And then <clears throat> topic one. Now take note, including plots, okay, is under topic one. Kasi yung topic one natin class is here. Then meron, we have here dalawang hashtags, <clears throat> okay, dalawang hashtags including plots, which is under topic one. Okay, so you can create a hierarchy class. This is very useful sa pag-outline ng, ng, ng headers nyo. No? <clears throat> In fact, alam nyo class kung anong class siya. And you can change it. Okay, if I go here class, okay, <laughs> I go here. Okay, asa na yung dalikasa. Hindi ko nakikita yung ano yun. Ah, dapat nasa ano tayo. <clears throat> nasa visual tayo. No? Which I'll explain in a while. Mamaya na yun. Okay, so <clears throat> all right, let's now let's now class uh, let's now render this. So how do you render or how do you knit a document? Okay, this is the advantage of our, our markdown. You find here class dito no, yung knitting icon na to. Okay, if you click this <clears throat> knit either to HTML, PDF <laughs> or word. Wag muna tayo sa PDF kasi may isang add-in na kailangan dyan. No? Dito muna tayo sa default. Need to HTML. Okay. If you click this class, first it will ask you kung ano name ng file. Now, ang question, saan, saan niya sinesave automatically? Saan niya sinesave? Automatically. <clears throat> Sa project, sir. Correct, sa project. So, because this we're working on R and R Studio, I can I can decide to save it here, no? Sa R and R Studio. And then you have to name it, no? Let's say, uh, out, I'll just call it output one, okay? Output one. And then it's a save ko, no? Save ko siya, class. And magre-render dito yan. Makikita nyo dito sa console. Iraran niya. Ipoprocess ni R. And then it will convert, it will work on it and render it there. So makikita dito class sa viewer, and dito yung HTML file natin. There. This is the output. And notice class, automatically class, rinan niya yung, ano, yung summary ng speed, ng sa, yung summary. Diba? And sinama niya class yung, ano, yung code na to. And here below, sinama din niya yung pressure. No? Sina, sinama niya yung pressure, sinama niya yung output. Even if in our R markdown here, hindi naman natin, hindi nakaprint dito sa, sa ano natin, sa, uh, sa source window, yung result ng plot script. Okay? Untitled siya class kasi, I didn't give a name to the title of this RMD file. And dito yung name, and dito yung, yung date, which I discussed last time. Ito. Then when you render this again tomorrow, mag automatically yan, magiging 117 yan. Okay, and you can see here the main topic, <clears throat> introduction to RMD, and dito yung sub -head header niya, sub-sub, and then <clears throat> topic 2. 
Okay. And this time, uh, if you take a look at our, okay, punta tayo dito sa files natin. Okay. If I open R and R Studio intro, because this is where I save the file. Okay. And dito si output one. Okay. Either as an RMD file and the HTML. And dito siya. No? Okay. And take note class, automatically, ni name niya yung RMD file natin na output one here. Which is this one. Okay. And it's inside your R and R Studio in intro. Now, let me backtrack to my question last time. Pag close ko kasi to, plus, tatanungin ka kung isi-save mo ba tong document na to. Tatanungin ka kung isi-save mo tong doc. Although naka-save na siya, no? So, hindi ka na tatanungin kung isi-save mo yung output one. But when I close this class, okay? If I close this, what will happen? So, let me close this now, no? I'll close this. All right. So, sabi dito the do the title the document, untitled one, ito yun, has unsaved changes. Do, do I want to save it? Okay, I can decide to save it or not save it. I, I'll choose not to save it na lang. No? Pag sinave ko, tatunin ka kung anong location. No? Kung ano, look, anong, nasa ano pa rin yan, nasa R project mo. No? Pero kasi may mga folders sa tayo doon. So I'll just choose not to save it. Don't save. All right. And then, ito class, no? Save workspace image. Okay, I save ko siya. Save. <clears throat> All right. So what happened now? I'll close this. Okay, I'll close this class and if I open the R again, <clears throat> ano mangyayari? Okay. Wala na naman, no? Wala. <clears throat> Wala class. Bakit wala? Kasi, di ba, ang default ko, I will not open in a new in a new file. Okay? I will not open the file which I saved before. Okay. So, I'll close this again. Now, what if I want to go back to the file that I was working on? No problem. <clears throat> but you have the, you know, you have the project. So, you go to your project. Okay? So, if I go to my project, I can click this. Or I can click this one, this is an RMD file. I can open this. Okay? Or as I said, I can click this. If I open this R project, see what happens. Okay. What happens, class? <clears throat> you now have here all right. You have here R and R Studio. You can open this. Okay, you can open this. So when you open the R pro the R project class, it will open your files here. Which I, you can you can see that if I open this, everything is here. All right. Then I can go here to R and R Studio. If I want to open this, okay, there. We're now able to open what we were working on last time. So it's a very convenient class. Okay. Then I can open this one. So either I can open it in editor or in my view in web browser. Okay. Here in viewer. Or so many ways to open this. I can just open it here. If I open this output one, sa web niya iyo open class yan. So you can share this, kasi HTML file to eh. So naka store to sa web class, you can share this site, this link, and then ma access yan. Okay. So let's go back here, class. I uh, my intention now is to. Let's make this echo is equal to false class. So what will happen if we make it echo is equal to false? Oh, by the way, class. Uh, <clears throat> okay. It's no longer in viewer. Kasi klinosa natin kanina to. Files. 
What happened here, class? This one. Include is equal to false. Sir? Yes? Oh, may try po. Oh, siguro, hindi okay. siya magpapakita sa printing. Sa printing. Sige, tingnan natin, yes. ha? So, pag include is equal to false, ba, class? Yung R setup na to? Will it show in the uh, printing? Uh, sorry, hindi ko na acknowledge who was the one who who recited. Uh, uh, Gab, sorry. Thank you, Gab. Yeah, no? yes. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. So, let's see, class. What happened to the output a while ago, class? So let me click this. Kahit sa view na lang. Uh, sa editor natin. Ay, sorry, sorry. Dito siya nag-ano sa ano. Editor class, ito yung, ito yung language ng, ano, ng HTML. No? So hindi naman natin aaralin yan kasi HTML uh, script na ito. Eh, no? This is the script of, of generating an HTML <clears throat> file. Yan, no? Okay. So we don't need that. But if you are into that no, class, pwede niyong aralin kung paano na generate yan <clears throat> sa, view, sa viewer natin ito class. Alright. Do you see here the uh, the code chunk for uh, the setup class? Wala, di ba? Wala. So hindi na sama yun, no? Hindi na sama yon. So, my distinction class yung include at saka yung echo. Okay, there's a uh, distinction between that. So, uh, but let me not elaborate on that now. Kasi class, hahabulin ko yung ano, ano, yung another important thing, yung kwarto. I want to discuss it with you now. Okay, so let's go back to our, our file. Okay, this one is uh, very important for us now. Okay, let's open now. So, meron na tayong... We have studied yung R script. We have studied R markdown. Okay, I'm pressed for time. Third is Quarto document. Let's open a Quarto document. And I just, I will not give it any name. Create. All right. So what do you notice about the Quarto document class? Sir, parang, parang naka-viewer na siya. Okay. Uh, so, tingnan nyo, no? Uh, thank you. Uh, Gabi ko yun, ano? So, iba yung interface ng kwarto document. No? Tingnan nyo number, number one class, yung code chunk. Diba? So, sa code chunk class, what do you notice? Okay, thank you, Francis. Sabi ni Francis, uh, walang line numbers, Okay. Walang line number siya. Also yung code chunk natin, di ba? Wala na siyang no backticks. Okay. No backticks. Okay. Sorry ha. Uh, let me go back quickly kasi baka makalimutan ko ito. No? Uh, quickly now, class. Yung code chunk, di ba? Sabi natin, how do you create a code chunk here? Well, manually, what you do is uh, itong backticks tatlo. Tapos, you have to name it R. Okay. Okay, why why do you have to specify R? The reason class is that you can now create also a Python document here. So you have to identify kung ang gene-generate mo na code is uh, R or Python. Okay, so that's why you have to identify if it's R. All right. Now there's a shortcut, of course, for <clears throat> for generating your code, your code chunk. Kasi kung ano kung ano class ma mahaba, no? You have to write yung tatlong, you have to click yung tatlong backticks and then yung brackets are and then close brackets and then yung <clears throat> backticks ulit. So there's a shortcut for that. And the shortcut for that, sabihin ko na kasi we're running out of time. Control plus out for, for Windows class. So this is a shortcut. <clears throat> Control out I. And then for uh, for Mac users, command plus option plus I. Okay? So this is for Windows users. Control Alt I. So Windows to. 
for mark it's command option i kindly try please and confirm if you were able to generate the code chunk very quickly class instead of the manual way to do it kindly chat please Okay, thank you, Francis. How about the others, class? Okay, Joaquin, thank you. Okay, Sherry, thank you. All right, good. Thank you, class. Okay, so please remember that. Remember the shortcut, so you don't you don't have to manually uh, manually uh, write the back ticks and then the brackets to generate a code chunk. Okay, now compare that with your QMD file. All right, your QMD file, your code chunk. It's no longer does not does no longer contains your your uh, backticks. All right, then will that work also? Yung shortcut niyo? will that work also with the uh, with the uh, QMD file? Warto, could you kindly try please and confirm if it will also work with the, the Quarto document? Okay, thank you. How about the others, please? Okay. Okay, good. So confirmed nothing, I know. In my case, I'm using Windows, so Control Alt I there. Okay. So <clears throat> we will compare class the Quarto document. Let's save this first. If I save this, so once again, I go to File, File, Save As. And then where am I going to save it? Let me save it here in R and R Studio. Okay. And this is, uh, let, let me just quart, name it Quarto Intro. Quarto Intro. <clears throat> And then save. All right, you can see immediately that we now have this one. And the uh, the extension, file extension, is not an RMD file. It's a QMD file. Okay, can you see class, the QMD here? <clears throat> okay, QMD siya dito, no? Unlike the RMD, which is RMD. So you have here an RMD file, you have an you have a QMD file. Okay. Now let's go back to our RMD and uh, let's uh, let's see the distinction between them. Okay. I think we have enough time. Uh, why don't we first uh, let's let's download class. Let's download a logo of R Studio. Let me see R Studio logo. Okay, so this is an R Studio logo. Maybe this one. Or image along. Kasi logo parang limited. So images lang. All right. Maybe this one. So kindly download a picture of this let's click this and then visit visit go okay there <clears throat> so i'm going to save image as <clears throat> Save images and automatically it saved there in in my directory. R Studio large logo PNG image. Okay, save. So if I go back to R, okay. All right. So it's uh, it's not saved in R and R Studio. It's saved here in the main folder. Uh, where is that? Okay, let me see. Hmm. 
I think I saved it in the wrong place. Okay, let me redo that. Save image as. Uh, okay, it saved in FinSAR. So let me save it in FinLips. And let me save it again in R and R Studio. R Studio logo. Okay. R Studio logo one, PNG image save. Okay, if I open my R again, so it's not here in the main folder, but it's here in R and R Studio entry. There. Okay. Now uh, open this class and if you open the document, <clears throat> what will happen if I copy copy the picture class, copy the image, and paste it here in our markdown? Comment, please, class. If I copy the image and paste it in an R markdown file, will it will it save class? Will it uh, Will it copy? Kindly confirm class if you were able to copy the image in an R markdown file. No? Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It does not, class. It does not. Okay. How about if we do that in Quarto? <clears throat> so go anywhere here, maybe here. <clears throat> Just make sure you have enough space. Do not do not uh, do not put it uh, exactly below a code chunk. Sometimes uh, uh, sometimes a gaga problem. No? So put <clears throat> a space be between uh, after your code chunk. Okay. Thank you, Eliza. How about the others? What was your experience? Yes, correct, plus. Correct. So it's very easy to, so let me, uh, where's my image here? Okay. Copy. Let me do it also so in my quarto, control V, there. So notice class that it's more, it's easier class to use quarto especially when you're working with uh, images, tables, etc. Now, can you point out class what what's a what's one difference between the interface, the tabs uh, of Quarto and RMD? What's one difference? Anything you notice, class? <clears throat> Anything you notice <clears throat> about comparing the interface of uh, your RMD file and your Quarto, QMD file, Quarto markdown? OK, you have an answer here. More organized, yes, Chloe, thank you. Similar to a Word file, okay. Okay, in what way is Quarto similar to a Word file, uh, Eliza? Okay, <laughs> yeah. Okay, there are no line numbers and you can paste images, okay. That's correct, class. Also, take a look at the interface, diba? Ito, diba? Wala, you don't find this in the RMD file. If you take a look at insert, take a look at what you can do here. You can insert a YAM, YAML block, okay, a table, an image, a link, okay? Citation class. You can insert a citation. For example, if you're in your text and then you would want to cite 
where this is coming from, okay, and that will become part of your bibliography. You can do that. Footnote also cross-reference. LaTeX math, okay? Uh, I didn't discuss this with you yet, but when we go to time series, we will be discussing this. Okay, so several things that you can do. Now, in in RMD, you can do that. However, it's it's really more difficult. Okay, don't get me wrong. In RMD class, you can also insert images. Pero, pag RMD class, medyo ano, ang problema natin dyan, i, we can link, we can... We can link that R Studio image and paste it in RMD, but you have to you have to code it. No, pwede natin i-code. Pero actually, class, okay, actually, nag-update kasi si R, no? R updated, and in particular, it updated also the RMD. Now you can you can now do this. You can now what do whatever you're doing in Quarto, QMD, also in RMD, okay. How is that? Tignan nyo to class. What's this? What's this class? Where am I? Am I in Quarto? Am I using a QMD file or an RMD file? RMD file, sir. RMD file. Naka-view lang. Naka-visual yeah. lang. Po siya. Correct. No? So... Uh, some some versions ago, they decided to put. So this is where we're coming from. Yung source, you can now now you can now go to the visual. Okay, it's the same class. However, the interface na ginagamit niya is the QMD file. Okay, so you can you can now use uh, RMD file even if you want to put uh, images, because yung yung capability ng QMD is now also with RMD which actually makes uh, QMD quite ano quite parang let's say sabi nating kailangan pa rin ba no do we still we need don't that have to use it na po sir yung QMD kasi yung yung features ng QMD kaya mo na sa ano eh sa RMD diba ito na rin yun eh diba it's exactly the same so Oh, well, of course, may, may use pa rin naman yung QMD kasi, okay, kasi si QMD class, uh, you can create a presentation out of that. No? But you can also create a presentation out of RMD. No? So, which begs the question, kailangan pa rin ba siya? Well, for all intents and purposes, uh, hindi na eh. So, although may mga features pa rin, uh, I, haven't, I haven't really... Uh, gotten down to the nitty-gritty details of the difference between a QMD and RMD now, no? Kasi dati talagang wala namang visual to eh, si RMD. That's why very glaring yung, ano, yung difference ng QMD. So I used to use I used to use QMD before also. Pero ngayon, because of these added features sa RMD, I didn't have to uh, to migrate to a QMD file. Pwede na si, ano mismo? Pwede na si si RMD. And besides class, ganun din naman si Quarto eh. Tinin to. Kasi may source window na rin dito. Ganun na rin class, di ba? Right? Parang same-same na siya. No? There seems to be no difference anymore. All right. Any questions class? Uh, so far, may I have your confirmation class? May I have your Feedback kung clear ba siya or okay. Okay, good. Good. Thank you so much. Okay. So let me just give an introduction to okay. As far as so as far as uh, the Discussion on R, R Studio, uh, R Markdown is concerned class. Tayo, no? We're we're practically finished with it, no? So, but of course, sabi ko nga class yung sa particularly when you make use of the insert. Okay, we will we will not have time really to look at uh, inserting citations. 
day table madali lang no? or latex math we will okay wait huh? okay pareho din okay all right so for now class uh, i would want to introduce Okay, thank you for your feedback. Okay, uh, for now, class, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to learn uh, the introduction to the use of uh, R as far as uh, RMD as far as the use of packages is concerned. We have uh, some more minutes. So let's open a new, uh, dito na lang class. Dito na lang. Let's work on this unless you want to save this. Okay. All right. So let's go. Let's just go below class. Control Alt I. <clears throat> let's insult ins, uh, include another insert another code chunk. <clears throat> now <clears throat> we have the the uh, the. When we're going to prepare a project, okay, the first uh, project that we're going to do is a project on time series. Now, this will not be as detailed as the one that we do in uh, Fin Arts. So we will just go through the the main points as far as generating <clears throat> uh, time series is concerned, because it's actually the sp springboard to the uh, the main topic, which is portfolio optimization. So it's important for us to learn first time series before we go to portfolio optimization. So uh, as I mentioned before, R contains several <coughs> uh, several add-ins. And this, this add-ins take the form of what we call packages. So packages are also codes that people who know how to code in R contribute to CRAN. If you recall, CRAN stands for Comprehensive R Archive Network. All right. So uh, there are packages that already come pre-packaged with R. So you don't need to install them. However, there are many packages that do not come pre-packaged with R. So we will have to install them. So how do you install packages? So the main the main code in installing packages is this one install that packages okay <clears throat> install that packages okay and then you put it in quotes <clears throat> okay and then let's see let's uh, there are many there are from last count i think more than 20000 packages that come <clears throat> That, that's available in CRAN. But of course, we're not going to use all of them. We're just going to use at least uh, 20, 30, 30 packages. That's most important to us. For our purposes, that's uh, more than enough. Okay, so uh, let's start with the, the most common packages. <clears throat> so let's start with a package that's used for, okay, data visualization. Okay, one of the most important packages used in data visualization is ggplot2. There. So if you were not my student before, this package is has not yet been has not yet been uh, installed in your case. <clears throat> so before before we do this, let's try. Uh, in order to access a particular package, you use the word library, and then ggplot2, or it's the same as, let me put a comment here, require ggplot2. Okay, take note, class. The main code that I wrote here is library ggplot2 and then hashtag require ggplot2. Okay, could you kindly run this? You will have varying answers. Those of you who were my students before will, of course, 
be able to uh, access this. But for most of you, I'd, I'd like to see your comments, what you got when you run this. <laughs> so waiting for your feedback, Lance? Error, okay, thank you. Jeff, Kathleen, Chloe, error, okay. All right, why is it an error class? Why are you getting an error? You're getting an error message class, error output. It's because ggplot2 has not been loaded to your R. So how do you install this package? So we make use of this function, install that packages there. Okay, install that packages. Now, you're at, if you see here, class, install, if you just type install that, you notice that there are many uh, functions that start with install. One of them is install that packages. And you have this open and close uh, brackets. What does this mean? This means that this function, install that packages, comes from the utils package. Okay, It comes from the utils uh, package. This function, install that, install that packages. Okay, install that packages. Let's click this. And then let's uh, put in quotes, ggplot2. Okay, and then close quotes. So let's run this now. Kindly, please. I will not run it because I have already this package installed in my computer. All right. And then please uh, describe what's happening in your computer. It's almost time, class. So uh, I know you don't mind me extending just a few minutes. Can somebody please comment what happened? For install the packages, uh, Francis, uh, may, uh, may I request for you to share your screen, please? Stop share ako. Pwede mo share yung screen mo? Eliza then, no? All right. Ang iran mo lang, ano ah? Just go, uh, Francis, just go to install the packages line. Don't run the code chunk, no? Yan lang iran mo. Yan. Sige. Control, enter mo yan. You don't have to, you don't have to, uh, updating, currently loaded, Sige, yes mo. Okay, what happened was, uh, well, while Francis is <clears throat> installing, what happened was, Francis, could could I have your confirmation? What did we, what did you click a while ago? Did you click the run the current chunk, this one? The uh, green, tri the green triangle there? Uh, yes, In please. Okay, so... When Francis clicked that green triangle, of course, R will first go to library ggplot2. At the back, kanina, it did not run, run because we haven't loaded ggplot2. So you have to first run install that packages. Now, take note, no? Ayan, ang sabi na dyan, uh, Francis, can you go to console and just uh, <coughs> increase mo na lang yung space ng ano? Bawasan mo yung files, yung files window. Yan, ibaba mo siya. Yan, sabi dyan, no? Install that package just there. Trying URL, etc. So it means that uh, R is now communicating with CRAN, no? In order to get the package ggplot2. Ayan, nakuha na niya, downloaded na. Sige, uh, kindly increase again, Francis, your, your, okay. 
So sige, i-run muna yung ano, run library ggplot to that, that code lang. Punta ka lang sa line na yon Anywhere there. You don't have to highlight. You don't have to highlight. I-try mo, Franz, dyan lang, sa dulo o sa harap. Or in the, in the middle. Sige, ilagay mo sa gitna. Sa gitna ng, ng code na yon Three dito pa. Uh, kunyari, library. Punta ka sa G. Ah. Yan, anywhere there, no? You can go anywhere to that line. Tapos, control, enter mo. Okay. Now what happened, class? Now what happened? Tingnan nyo, class, oh. Dito sa console, library, ggplot2. Okay. Nag-error pa ba siya? Hindi na. Ibig sabihin nun, class, nag-run na siya. It means that now, ggplot2 is available dito sa machine ni, ni Francis. Okay? So we can now use the, the, uh, the functions that comes with ggplot2. Okay? So I just, I just gave an introduction class. Okay? To... Sige, uh, share screen na ako. Okay, thank you, Francis. So thank you for that. So class, careful sa pag ng code siya. Ka. So... Ang lesson natin dito, Francis run the whole code chunk. But it will run first yung library ggplot2. Okay? Kung nauna sana, Francis paki ano mga erase mo yung ah sorry, nasa akin na pala no. Francis could have done this, control x and then una inuna niya yung install that packages. Now this will run class. Ito okay to. Kasi it will install first the ggplot2 and then it will it will open, it will access the ggplot2. So in order to op install a package, you use install that packages, and then to acquire, to uh, to access the capabilities, you use library or required. Okay? So let me end there, class. Stop